Would you turn with me to Matthew 24? Matthew 24. It always thrills my heart whenever I have studied and prepared and I have a message and, and then I get here and all the songs go right along with the message and, and build toward it. And I know that the Holy Spirit is guiding on every hand. He's guiding the song leader and the ones who picked out the specials to sing and everything. Matthew chapter 24, we're going to read the first 14 verses. Try to put them in context and then apply them to us, to our lives. How do we fit in there? Matthew chapter 24, would you stand with me? We read from God's Word, Matthew chapter 24, beginning in verse 1. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show uh, him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence, and earthquakes in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall arise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. Let's pray. Dear Father, we bow this morning in your house, in your presence, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be here. We thank you for those who are here uh, physically. We thank you for those who will watch um, online. And, Father, we just thank you, God, most especially for your presence, Lord. We thank you that uh, your provision and your uh, sustenance and your care has brought us to this point that we can assemble and lift up your holy name and and lift up the name of Jesus. I just ask you today, Lord, for your forgiveness, for your cleansing, and for your anointing, for your preaching grace, for your uh, help in presenting Jesus, Lord, in a way that's understandable, in a way that uh, will be received. He'll be received um, by, by those near and far, God, that salvations might be accomplished through this word today. Lord, we thank you for making salvation available. We thank you for the love that made it available for Jesus who paid our price and, and is now set at your right hand. And we just, along with the uh, uh, Apostle John, we're anxious. We're looking forward to the time when you'll come get us and we say, even so come, Lord Jesus, come. It's in that name most precious that we pray. Amen. Here. Remember the three questions, and I'm not going to focus on them, but Jesus is asked privately by his disciples, tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the age? So we have to keep in mind, Jesus here in this entire discourse is answering these three questions. Um, I want to focus because of most of this you and I have nothing to do with. Most of, most of this discourse, we are simply uh, watchers. We're simply watching, and, and we can be watchful, and we can be ready, can't we? And that's why I told this, so that we would be watchful and ready. But we have nothing to do with earthquakes and, 
and, and pestilences and those things. We can't stop them. We can't bring them on, can we? But the fact is, the last very few verses that we read affect us, and we have an effect on those verses. Because beginning in verse number 12 said, And because iniquity shall abound. That means, that little phrase, iniquity, if you look it up, it means lawlessness. Lawlessness shall abound. Look around. And because of this lawlessness abounding, it says the love of many shall wax cold. We have something to say about that, don't we? We have the opportunity to make sure that our love does not wax cold, even though we see lawlessness abounding. We can make sure that we don't let our love wane or our love wax cold or grow cold. He then says, but he that shall endure to the end, the same shall uh, be saved. So we can make sure that we have enduring faith. In other words, we have believed in Jesus. We can continue to believe, can't we, in Jesus. That's what 1 John chapter 5 tells us. He said, I'm writing to you that have believed that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in Jesus so we can have enduring faith. And then verse 14 says that this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. Then shall come the end. We have no, we have no uh, uh, ability to, to hasten the end or, or, or cause it to, to, to postpone the end. But we do have the opportunity to preach the gospel, don't we? And so all of these last three verses here that we read have to do with, with us very clearly. I'd like to read to you what my commentary says concerning these verses. It says, Many shall come, refers to false messiahs, who have now spanned the centuries of the church history and have led many astray into false religious cults. Wars and rumors of wars, Speak, uh, refers to peace being taken from the earth and the constant wars that have continually marked the age, this age, the age of the Gentiles, the church age, famines and pestilence. These events mark only the beginning of sorrows. This is followed by martyrdom and the rise of false prophets and the abounding of iniquity. The gospel of the kingdom refers to the missionary expansion of the church in all the world. The gospel shall be preached in all the world, the inhabited world, and unto all nations, Gentile nations, as contrasted to the Jews. Then shall the end come. Um, says, then shall the end come would then refer to the end of the church age. I want to focus on verses 12, 13, and 14 this morning. And because of iniquity, lawlessness shall abound, the love of many shall wax or grow cold. May you and I make sure that we do not allow our love to wax cold or to grow cold because in times like these, what we need is more love. What our society needs is more love. To quote Russell Wilson, love changes things. Love changes things. Love is long-suffering. Love is kind. Love is not envious. Love is not self-willed. Love is not prideful. Love is not rude. Oh, we live in a rude society, don't we? Love does not think the worst of people. Love gives the benefit of the doubt. Love sees and seeks the good. Love hopes. Love never gives up. Simply put again, love changes things. If we want to make a change, how about we try being more loving? How about we try letting the love of God flow through us unto others? That's what Scripture instructs us to do. Love 
is what made our salvation possible. God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, Romans 5 and 8. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life, John 3, 16. Beloved, if God loved us, so loved us, we ought to love one another. 1 John 4, 11. So with love and enduring faith, let us preach or share or proclaim this gospel in these last days. As we look around and we think we can see that the day is drawing near, the end, and that what Jesus said, that was the last phrase we read, after all these things, then the end shall come. So if we see the end drawing near, we need to make a determination to be loving and to preach the gospel. This gospel, being that Jesus Christ, the very Son of God, died for our sins on the cross of Calvary, was buried and rose again the third day for our justification. According to the Scriptures, this gospel must be preached, and it must be preached now, and it must be preached at every opportunity. It must be preached near, and it must be preached far if we're going to fulfill the words, the instructions that we're given by the Lord Jesus Christ. This gospel means good news in a world filled with turmoil, in a world filled with lawlessness, in a world filled with trouble, there's good news. And that good news is Jesus saves. God loves you. And Jesus died for you to save you. He rose again to justify you. You can approach unto God because of Jesus. You see, this gospel must be preached. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him? Whom they, of whom they have not heard. And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Romans chapter 10, 13, 14, and 15. It is God's plan that you and I, motivated by love, take this gospel to a lost and dying world. It is glad tidings of good things. Jesus saves. Jesus delivers. Jesus breaks strongholds. Jesus gives us new meaning and purpose in life. Jesus saves. Bless God. Jesus and, his, and the love of Jesus changes things. This gospel is powerful to save. In Romans 1.16, Paul said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. What power is in the gospel? Power to save the most wretched among us. Power to save. It don't matter what you've done. It don't matter how far you've gone. Listen, God can can reach out in His love and in His mercy and in His grace and save you and deliver you from that hell-bound situation that you're in and put you on the road to glory. Praise His name. What salvation that Jesus made possible by His death in our place on Calvary's cross. This gospel is for all people. Mark 16, 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He didn't say preach the gospel to the righteous. Preach the gospel to the morally upright. Preach the gospel to those that look like you, sound like you, talk like you. Preach the gospel to those that you want to company with. He said preach the gospel to everybody. My friend, wherever you are and whatever you've done, you have not sunk too low for God to reach you. The fact is that we're all sinners before the Lord. Romans 3.23 said, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. As a matter of fact, I want to read that in context. We quote that verse, and we quote it regularly. 
I want to read that this morning in context. I'm going to start in 22. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation uh, through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God to declare, I say, at this time His righteousness that He might be just and the justifier of Him which believeth in Jesus. What this is saying is that all of us are in the same boat. We're sinners separated from God uh, uh, guilty before Him, the only way any of us are made right is by the blood of Jesus Christ, by placing our faith and our trust in Jesus and what He's already done on our behalf. That's the only way any of us can be made righteous. So, we're all sinners before God. We all need the blessed Savior, Jesus Christ. And we all can be saved. See, God's not slack concerning His promises. Some men count slack, slackness, but His long-suffering to usward. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The Lord wants all men everywhere to repent. We have established that we can only be made righteous through Jesus. We have established that He is the Savior who paid for our sin debt. We have established that all of us need Him as our Savior. So the only question left is why not today? The only question left is if not today, when? The Bible says that today is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. If you're not saved, this message is for you. I have to believe that you want to go to heaven when this life is over. I have to believe that you do not want to go to hell. There is only one way for that to happen. That is through faith in Jesus Christ in what He has already accomplished on your behalf. But you have to place your faith in Him and ask for forgiveness, for cleansing, for, for salvation in order for it to be applied to your account. So I beg you to hear God's message today. You are a sinner now. That's why it's so important that you be saved now. You are a sinner now. Romans 5 and 12 says, Wherefore is by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. If you're without Jesus Christ, if you've never placed your faith and trust in Him, you are lost now. You are hell bound now. Right now, this morning, from wherever you are, without Jesus, you are bound for hell now. The good news is that you're invited to receive Jesus right now, this very moment. You're invited to come to Jesus Christ. All is right for you to be saved now. All has been taken care of by God. He loved you. He paid your price. He reaches out with His Holy Spirit to convict you and to draw you. He's given the message and caused you to tune in in order that you could have the opportunity to be saved now. So what must you do? The question was asked of the apostle in Acts 16, what must I do to be saved? The answer was believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. 
That's what you must do. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Place your faith in Him. John 1, 12, As many as received Him, that means placed their faith in, believed on Him, as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, to them that believe on His name. So that's what it takes. Believing on Jesus. I ask you, will you make Him your choice? Because you will make a choice today. If you're without Jesus Christ, and this message is going forth unto you, you will make a choice today. I ask you, will you choose Him? Because you will choose either to receive Christ or to reject Christ. It's a choice between heaven and hell. It's a choice between life and death. God has set before you today the way of life and the way of death. Eternal life and eternal death. Eternal glory with Him and eternal torment in hell. God has set before you today the way of life and death and you have to choose if you're without Jesus Christ. It will be a choice between God, the one true God, Jehovah God, and the gods of this world. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Will you serve the God who loved you enough to give His only begotten Son so that you could have life? Or would you, will you choose to serve the gods of money or fame or or crime, or whatever it is that you're chasing after. Tomorrow may be too late. There's urgency in this message, and there's urgency in your reception of this message. Tomorrow may be too late. In Acts 24, we read of Governor Felix, who heard Paul preach to him, in fact, Paul reasoned with him about uh, uh, righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come. And Felix said, when I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. We have no record that that convenient season ever came. As far as we know, Felix is sizzling in hell today because he, didn't, he put off salvation too long. Tomorrow might be too late. In Acts 26... We find Agrippa, and Paul shared his testimony and preached the gospel unto King Agrippa. And Agrippa said, Almost, Paul, thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Almost. But we have no record that he became all the way convinced, all the way persuaded. You see, almost a Christian is all the way lost. And if he died that way, Today in hell he's sizzling. In Luke 16, we read about a rich man who waited too long. We don't know much about him other than that he fared sumptuously, that there was a beggar lying at his gate. We know that the beggar had heard about Jesus, so we have to assume the rich man had opportunities to hear about Jesus. But the Bible says, and in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torment. That does not have to happen to you, my friend. It does not have to happen to you because Jesus made a way. He paid your price. He offers to you salvation. He offers to you forgiveness. And he sent me with this word today to deliver to you. Wherever you are, however low you might have sunk, maybe you're looking at this on social media. I want you to know that Jesus loves you, that He paid your price, and He'll save you. It's dangerous to put off salvation. Did you know that every one of us 
Unless we're the generation that's alive when Jesus returns, every one of us have an appointment with death. Hebrews 9, 27 tells us that. It's appointed unto man wants to die. And after this, the judgment. So we not only have an appointment with death, we also have an appointment with judgment. Beside all of that, the end looks like to me is near. We just read the opening statements. Jesus was answering the questions, remember, when shall these things be and what is the sign of thy coming and the end of the age? And what did he, he gave some things and every one of them we see. Every sign that he gave, every indication that is drawing near, we see. The things that we can affect because of the lawlessness, we can be determined not to allow our love to grow cold. We can determine to have enduring faith, and we can determine to preach the gospel. That's the things that we can affect. But it don't change the end drawing near. So will you be saved? If not today, when? Do you know you have tomorrow? Can any of us, those of us who are saved or, 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 or those who are not, can you tell me that you know you have tomorrow? You don't know that. You may have plans for tomorrow, but you don't know that you'll see tomorrow. None of us do. So the time is now. One day, it's going to be too late. One day, we'll stand before our Maker. And how we leave this life is how we'll face eternity. And that'll determine how we spend and where we spend eternity in heaven with God because we received His love, His forgiveness, His salvation, His Son Jesus, or in hell and torment because we rejected Him. See, it really is up to us. You might say, well, well, preacher, I can never make up for the bad. I didn't ask you to make up. God didn't ask you to make up for what you've done. He said, I'll cleanse you. By the blood of Jesus, I'll cleanse you. And I'll robe you with the righteousness of Christ. Will you profess your faith in Jesus Christ today? Cry out to God. Have mercy on me, a sinner. I place my faith in you, Jesus. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you paid my sin debt on that cross. I believe that you're coming for those of us who believe and take us to glory. Forgive me and save me. Will you pray something like that today? Will you cry out to God today for cleansing, for forgiveness, for salvation today? He'll save your soul if you'll just receive what He offers. Let's stand. Dear Father, we bow before you Again, we give you thanks for your love. We give you thanks for Jesus who paid our debt. And Lord, we give you thanks for the opportunity to lovingly, passionately, compassionately take your message to a world that so desperately needs it. And I pray that there's somebody, somebody that will hear this message and turn their heart and life over to Jesus Christ. For, for, for His honor and for His glory that we, that we preach it and that we make our petition. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Will you let Him have His way in your life? Will you claim Jesus as your Savior? Holding nothing back. Just saying, Lord God, here am I. I've made a mess of things. 
but I'm ready to turn it all over to you. I'm ready to give you what I am and what I can be. Will you forgive me? Will you save me? Will you cleanse me? Will you help me walk a new way? I pray to God you're more than almost persuaded today. I pray to God that you're all the way persuaded that you'll invite Jesus into your heart. Let him take over the reins of your life. That you'll be saved today. If you'll do that, then you'll become a child of God. Heir and joint heir with Christ himself. You'll have a home beyond this world. 